Welcome to Team Tiger TV. I am joined by Georgianne Lucier. It's great to have you here. Thank you. And what was your original inspiration for Midlife Matter? I had written, a, self-published a book called 55 Plus Unite based on the experience I had of losing a job at 55 and then having to... <laughs> you know, get back into the job market at, during an economic crash. And I really was inspired with the idea that women can support women, you know, rather than uh, be catty or discouraging. And it's hard to, <clears throat> excuse me, it's hard to self-publish. It's an uphill climb. Yeah. And I had gone on a couple TV shows, like at Central Connecticut University where I'd graduated. Okay. They have an in-house TV show uh, and also one uh, locally. I was interviewed about um, homeschooling my daughter, but I also had published this book. So I just followed a hunch that maybe TV was something, another avenue to reach women. TV is obviously a great place to reach people. Uh, there's a bunch of different things that you could do to reach different people. And it's great that you want to empower other women. It's great that you want to just empower people in general. That must have been hard for you. Going midlife and then losing a job and then having to realize that you need to have everything come back. Uh, what motivates you to keep coming back to WPAA? It's been a wonderful opportunity. I meet so many different people that I happen to get referred to. Or even if it's someone that I've known somewhat, I tend to learn a lot more about them through the interview process. Because I do a, a pre-interview and really think about what the story might be what shape the story might take with the woman. So I learned something from every guest, and it's uh, um, always very uh, satisfying to see the final production. And the guests find it to be a very positive experience, even if they're nervous at yeah. first, which is natural. And um, it just adds to my understanding of how people can continue to grow. So you would say the... The experience, it's, it's fulfilling? It is fulfilling, and it's uh, continually building on itself. So you not only want to empower other women, but you're trying to self-better yourself pretty much every day? Yes, every day we have an opportunity to, to grow a little bit. I saw something interesting recently about the idea that we have a comfort zone, and that's not a brand new idea, but it was depicted as a circle. Yeah. And that if you stretch yourself a little bit, you have to get out of your comfort zone. Like the people who come on my show, I have to kind of sometimes convince them a yeah. little bit. And um, that then helps either just enlarge it a little bit so you just have a little more to work with. And what I found particularly interesting was if you don't stretch, your comfort zone can actually get smaller, which yeah. is not something we want to happen. Um, particularly as we're aging. So um, if you go too far out, sometimes it can be um, too big of a step at one time. So just finding that balance of trying new things with a reasonable chance of having it turn out okay. Uh, you talked about that kind of uh, related to like a, a elastic band or a rubber band, that if you stretch it too much, then yeah. it breaks. But right. if you don't stretch it enough, it, it just kind of stays there. So uh -huh. I think that's the perfect analogy for it. Thank you, yeah. I definitely agree. Uh, you definitely have to come out of your comfort zone because mm -hmm. if you stay in your comfort zone your entire life, you're never going to... There might be opportunities where you're scared to do. Mm -hmm. And the second you become scared, that's when you have to take the opportunity because either you're going to have to fall sometimes in life, but then you have to build yourself back up. That's how everybody gets better. That's how you self-improve. And at the end of the day, that's just what you have to do. It's part of uh, human nature. You just have to fall down and get back mm -hmm. up. So... And a lot of my guests echo that. They talk about different obstacles that they've run into, some of their own making, some that totally take them by surprise, some things that were outside of anybody's control, and how they responded. And, and again, very importantly, who, came, who are the helpers who will come and hold space with you or yeah. just um, offer some advice or some support? And very often it's women helping women. That uh, just goes back to the end of the day that you always have to have a good friend. Mm -hmm. Would you personally say that you're the type of person to have a, uh, a close circle, like a small circle of two to three f close friends? I think I have friends in different kind of bubbles, and it um, changes over time, mm -hmm. and that's one thing that um, we have to deal with. You, if you change jobs, you move, you, your circumstances you know, become different. 
um, sometimes friendships that were based on one thing, like say your shared work experience, doesn't yeah. translate to what you're doing next. Exactly. But you want to again just wish each other well and, and be supportive as possible. So I would say I've I've had the good fortune of just having friends for many many years from different areas of my life, and I make friends pretty easily. Yeah, you're a very talkative person. Mm -hmm. You're a very uh, upfront person, and a lot of people like that. Uh, I know personally I like talking to people like that. Mm -hmm. It makes uh, conversation flow easier. It's just you feel more comfortable talking that way when somebody's just kind of upfront and uh, a very talkable and likable person. Um, whose interview style has, in has influenced your approach to making your own show? I do tend to watch women, um, especially since I've been doing this show, say on TV or... Um, like say I'm Maria Bartorumo, I'm not um, so much a finance person, but I'm always interested in how women kind of present themselves and engage others. Um, but I don't particularly have any one person. I have a background in human resources, so I've done a lot of interviewing um, in my career, and I had women that I worked for, and that doesn't exclude men necessarily, but I just decided I had the liberty to focus on women. Um, which is great about doing your own thing. And I try to pick up, you know, ideas about um, the best way to engage people and give them, don't talk over them, because, you know, you get excited sometimes and you want to build on what someone's saying, but then that can break their chain of thought. So I had to really learn to be more like listening and let the person maybe have a little bit of a space where it's not necessarily comfortable, you don't know where it's going next. And a lot of that is the tempo with the interview. I was pointing out that I tend to try to time the different sections of the interview, so because I know I have 28 minutes generally yeah. to work with. So sometimes people start off talking more s deliberately, slowly, and then they get more comfortable, and then they really start talking a lot more. And I'm thinking, <sighs> do we have enough time to finish this? So it's a little bit like dancing. Yeah. And it's a little push-pull. Yeah, yeah. And, and they look to me... And I just say to them, if I ask you a follow-up question, it means we have a lot of time. And if it seems like I may be skipping over something, because it's not a, I don't really do a script before, but they have a chance to look at how we've uh, identified the topics we're going to talk about. And so just make them comfortable with that. What do you think the best way to make somebody comfortable is? And like the best way to, uh, while you're in an interview, the best way to like, you personally to get comfortable, but also to make the other person comfortable in the situation? Well, I, the main thing I think that occurred to me was to give people the questions in advance. Some of the people who have come on this show have been on local TV, uh, let's say state TV uh, program, for one reason or another, and they said they just kind of get ushered in and all of a sudden they're in front of the cameras and you know everything's very rushed. So I thought, well, that's not the way I would want to yeah. do it. And when I was on this one show with this woman, I didn't know how much time we had or anything. I didn't have any kind of an interview ahead of time. And then all of a sudden she goes, okay, well, that's it. It's a wrap. And I was kind of mid-sentence. So I didn't feel it ended very smoothly. I don't remember if it was edited after it or not. So sometimes you learn from things you don't want to do. And so I yeah. find that by um, developing a rapport with the person before the interview, on the phone or in person, having lunch or whatever, and then doing the outline and then they get to... Typically, people are happy with the outline I come up with, but it's an opportunity for them to look at it. Some people write out all their answers, not too many. Um, some haven't found it. They haven't looked at it since I sent it to them. So everyone, I try to watch people's styles, too. If you could interview anyone living or dead on your show, who would it be? Who is your dream interview per person that you'd love to just sit down and have a conversation with? Well, and that's a very big it? question. Um, living or dead? Well, actually, some of the people I admire the most that I've learned about more recently um, are men, like Winston Churchill. I think he was a man of his time, and um, he had a career that was up and down, but he was the right person, I think, to help kind of save democracy. So Winston Churchill is one person that um, comes to mind. I think he was kind of a crusty fellow to, to talk to. Um, I don't know, maybe Eleanor Roosevelt. I mean, just some of the big figures in history. If you had a chance to talk to Eleanor Roosevelt right now, what would you say to her? What would be your first sentence to start the conversation? Okay, I would say, Eleanor, you led such a fascinating life, and you made the most of every opportunity that came, and you were such a giver. And what did you find most satisfying? What stage of your life? 
So you wish to base your life and pretty much shape it after her, give and help other people? Well, that, I wouldn't put myself on that level, but um, I think um, certainly if we give of ourselves, people are more, it kind of does come back. It's an energy thing, I, I do believe. So um, also many people, and it was my own experience, when you're in very busy, when you're building your career and you hardly have time to even think it's, we're not as inclined to maybe get involved with things. I wasn't. Some people are community givers from day one. Yep. But then once, uh, it's pretty common that once as you mature and you get to understand your place in the world a little bit, very often um, you have a deeper appreciation for the impact, you know, just even one thing can have on people. What do you think your place is to help women and make them feel more secure? Is that what point of this whole interviewing process is or what do you think you're doing to help out the community I think for women it's um, I just was looking I actually had this little book that I wrote about my TV show at one point um, when I had interviewed 40 people and I found myself writing in there that some research had said that people get most inspired by people who are most like them so when you just asked me about Eleanor Roosevelt I'm like oh that's way out of my league yeah. right? but if you um Everyday people can inspire each other, so I think women can be most inspired by hearing the stories of people who are not celebrities, they're struggling with whatever they're dealing with right now, but they have found a way through things, and they have continued to learn, and they've got a good attitude, and that's inspiring to, you know, to others. Yeah. So I can be a facilitator of that. It's a small thing, but it's one yeah. way to help. No, it's it's definitely important. It's definitely a needed uh, thing. It's a needed person in every community, every uh, opportunity. You always need somebody to facilitate. If your show could blossom in any way, social media, t like bigger TV, mm -hmm. what would you rather have? Would you rather have it blossom through social media and the internet, or would you rather have it blossom through an actual TV and people tune in and uh, it's on every channel I, I think social media is where most people are getting their information these days mm -hmm. I mean TV certainly has its place yeah. people watch different shows so mm, um, even podcasts can be very effective so I don't necessarily have a preference around that I think it's more the listeners preference I would just like to have a broader reach by whatever means uh, people would kind of, you know, gravitate towards that. What are you putting in place to get this larger reach? What are you taking any steps to try and reach out, or are you just hoping somebody finds out about this and shares about it, and you get a way better, a bigger audience? I don't really have any um, success goals about the TV show. I think um, I just started it again more or less on a whim, and I was so impressed with the your our volunteer exec director. I was like, wow, this lady's really very enthusiastic and talented and smart, and you know, it would be great to work with her. So it just grew and grew, and that's a wonderful thing. Um, but I don't really um, actively, I just keep it pretty uh, modest, it, just within, you know, the way I've been doing it, and just, I mean, sometimes it's actually a little difficult to even get people to come on. Oh, wow. It can get a little discouraging because for whatever reason, people are intimidated or they're too busy or uh, they just don't, they're more of a private person. There's a lot of reasons. So um, it's something I just kind of keep going like the little train that could. So you keep doing this. You are on, how many people would you say you've interviewed? I think about 85. How, how often do you? find somebody new and uh, post a new uh, well, Typically video. I was doing it once a month when I started which worked well because again there's quite a bit of work involved from my end again on a volunteer basis so you want to make sure you have the space for to do it. There's been different points where it's been a little more active or there's been a lag and I thought well maybe this has kind of run its course and then something would happen and yeah. okay pick it up again so, and then as I mentioned to you before we started taping um, during, during COVID, COVID it was pretty much a hiatus and so Little by little, I, you know, started back this year, which is 2022. Thank you for watching Team Tiger TV.